Good morning, Rose Red Homestead. And today we are going to do um, some canning with three of my most favorite flavors. First of all, carrots. I love cooked carrots and we need some more uh, canned carrots out on our food storage shelves. So today we're going to do honey ginger carrots or ginger honey carrots, whatever. And um, we're doing them in pints and the recipe is in this book. And for those of you that have this book, it is on page 277, and it is the top row right here. Now, the thing about doing the, these recipes that are in these tables in the Ball Blue book is that instructions are kind of minimalist. And so I'm expanding those for us, and I'm actually going to do one thing that's a little bit different than uh, what is suggested in the process. So what I have right here is five pounds of carrots, that I have uh, prepared for the jars today just by slicing them. Now, whenever we do root vegetables, we need to be sure that we do three things. We need to wash, peel, and wash again. And that is to minimize the possibility of any botulism spores being carried into the jars. Um, botulism spores are found in soil. Carrots are grown in soil. And so with all root vegetables, the USDA recommends wash, peel, wash. And that goes for all root vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, one more, I was a beets, and, um, and of course, carrots. Now, uh, we're going to be doing, my best guess is about seven pints of carrots in five pounds. And so what I did using this recipe, it gives several ingredients that we need to include in the jar besides the honey and ginger. And the general instructions for all of those recipes, and there are like seven or eight of those recipes, is to mix everything together in a large bowl and then put into the jars. I'm not going to do that because the other ingredients are very liquid and they're gonna disappear down in the carrots. And there would be no way that I could make sure that uh, the right amount gets into each jar. So this is what I've done. I have put the ingredients in all of these jars, all seven of these jars first. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you what those ingredients are per pint jar. So if you're doing them in quarts, you would want to double the, the, these amounts. One half teaspoon salt, one quarter teaspoon ginger, two tablespoons orange juice, one tablespoon soy sauce, and one tablespoon of honey. Does that sound yummy or what? So we are, these jars were hot a few minutes ago. They've cooled down a little bit, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is put the carrots in, one inch headspace, and then we are going to fill them, fill the jars with hot vegetable broth. So it looks like we are very even in our distribution here. And we've left about an inch head space for all of these. Oh, I leaned into the cabinet and got stuff on my shirt. Oh well, now we're going to um, pour in the broth and then put on the lids and rings. All right, we are filling now with the broth. This is just vegetable broth. We buy it by the quart at Costco. Vegetable broth is something I don't usually can. I am using a mixture of regular mouth jars and wide mouth jars. It was nine degrees this morning and we have about 18 inches of snow on the ground. 
I just didn't want to go out and into the garage and try to find matching jars. So we're doing a mismatched jar batch, but I don't care. It works fine. Getting down to the bottom of the broth. Now, debubbling. Now the ingredients that are down at the bottom because of the broth being so hot they are going to redistribute and when we pull them out of the canner they will all be one color. I lost track. I think I did them all. Yeah, you did. Okay. Now, wiping off the rims. Now, one more thing. We will be using two canners. The Max holds four and the Nesco holds five pints. We have seven. How am I going to distribute them? Well, USDA says there needs to be a minimum of four jars when we do pressure canning. So I'm going to put four pints in the Max, three in the Nesco, but I'm also going to be putting a jar of water as a placeholder for that fourth one. I don't need to put a lid on it. I just need to have this mass in the canner as the dummy jar for the fourth jar in the Nesco. So let's load up the canners and get them started. So here we are with the Max and I'm checking the gasket to make sure it's riding the wire all the way around. I've checked to be sure that it's clear, the, um, the um, vent pipe is clear and now we're just ready to put this on. Processing time is 25 minutes, so I'm going to select canning. 25 minutes, I need to change that. Twenty-five minutes. It is on max pressure. It's on keep warm. I have no control over that. It doesn't bother a thing, so I just leave it alone. And venting, we don't want any purposeful venting. We're going to allow the canner to just cool down on its own. So I have everything all set and I'm ready to start. And there we go. Now let's move over to the Nesco. So we have our three pints of carrots here and our dummy jar right here making four. The gasket looks just fine. I have checked the vent, so we're going to close this. The pressure regulator needs to be in the up position because it is going to vent for 10 minutes. I'm going to select high, and then I'm going to select the time as 25 minutes. Whoop. And there's 25 minutes, and we are going to, everything else is fine, start. So it's going to run around the racetrack here for a little bit, get enough steam in there, then it will count down 10 minutes for steaming, then I will drop the pressure regulator to hold the steam inside, and then it will go ahead and get up to the correct pressure and process for 25 minutes. This one shuts off at the end of the processing time, and I love that. We can just then let it cool down. So we now have two canners going and they will both finish at about the same time. 
when I start them at the same time, they usually finish at about the same time. Usually the max is just a little bit faster. Um, and then we will let them cool down. When we've pulled them out and uh, are ready to show you, we will bring you back. And then we're gonna wait until they cool completely. We're gonna open one and test the results. I have not yet tasted these honey ginger carrots and I'm looking forward to it and I want to share that taste with you. So we will be back when we are taking them out of the canner. So both canners have finished, and what I do is I just um, loosen the lid, but I don't lift the lid on these, and then I let them sit for at least five minutes. We have had some pretty nasty siphoning. It's like, um, it's, it's like siphoning on steroids. When I open up the lid, the uh, liquid inside the jars just shoots out from under the lid, like a uh, lid of the jar, like um, a faucet. And I think I heard some of that going on, so we're gonna try to capture some of that on camera so that you can see. Now, it shouldn't be doing that, so why it does it, I don't know, because it, the, the pressure is completely gone and it has sat for a few minutes. So Jim is gonna bring the camera close and we're gonna take a look when I actually open the lid. So here we go. Well, I think it finished. Let's see, I know I heard some when the lid was still down. Oh, that's beautiful, but that wasn't the one. Well, neither was that one. So maybe I just imagined it. And no siphoning there. Oh, it's doing just fine. I'm just going to let it cool down right there. All right, let's move over to the Max. Okay, so let's open up the Max. And get these out. They turned out so beautiful. And we really have no siphoning, so that is great. I can smell the carrots. I can't smell the ginger honey yet, but uh, I'm, I know that it's in there. Okay, so we have seven beautiful pints of um, honey ginger carrots. Now we're going to let these cool the rest of the afternoon and early evening. Once they're cool enough, we'll come back and open up one of these and give it the taste test. This is really an easy recipe to do. Very, very easy. Takes very little time on the part of the cook. Uh, and that's the kind of thing I like. So we will be back in a few hours. Well, here we are. It's been hours later. Now these are not all the way cold, but they're cool enough that we can open. The rest of these I'm going to leave for about another five hours until we go to bed tonight. And then I will um, wash the jars and label them and remove the bands. But they all sealed, which is always good news. And so we'll just open this one. Good seal. They smell really good, so let's see how they taste. So I have put just a few right here in this bowl. And I'm going to take a little bite. They're nice and tender. Oh, my new favorite vegetable. You know, I cannot taste the honey and the ginger as individual ingredients. It is a blending of those two flavors with the orange juice and the soy sauce. They're, they're mild. They're um, a little bit sweet, but not a lot sweet. They are just mellow and wonderful. I really like them. 
I'm, we're probably going to eat this entire jar for dinner this evening, but these turned out just really great. I'm very, very pleased and so easy. What an easy recipe to do. And what a great addition for our food storage shelves to have six more uh, pints, not counting this one, the seventh that we're going to have for dinner tonight. So thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate you so very much and thank you for sharing. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do. And be sure and hit the bell so that you can receive notifications. And especially if you receive notifications, then you're going to get the messages that I put out on the community uh, page as well. And I often ask for input on that community page. So be a part of our community and we appreciate you and thanks for joining us and we'll see you at our next video.